<sighs> I'm not even finna do no intro. We finna just get straight into it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know you guys, some of you guys see the clip of what happened uh, on stream and um, the situation that occurred in Toronto. So I'm about to just go ahead and just really just explain what really went on. All right. So first things first, a lot of people ask, why were we even in Toronto? Uh, we were in Toronto to, to go to the Drake concert. We got front seats to go to the Drake concert. And uh, we just wanted to see Drake because, as you know, that's our favorite artist. And, uh, yeah, that's the reason why we're in Toronto. So I know a lot of people ask their questions like, why was the door open? Or um, why wasn't there security? Why you didn't get security? Et cetera. So I'm just going to really just break down my whole point of view of everything. And so people could just, you know, we could just move on from this as a whole and just go on and continue it as a whole, right? So, um... As we touch down in Toronto, we're hanging with uh, Krabaz, right? Krabaz is, uh, you guys, some of you guys know who Krabaz is. He works with a lot of streamers and YouTubers. Krabaz is supposed to be my person that could provide me content for the entire trip other than the Drake concert. He was just there to provide content, right? So as we go, Krabaz initially tells us that, yo, I can reach this club hosting, show love to Toronto, bro. Like, Toronto doesn't really get no love out here. So if you could show love to the city, that could be a big thing for the city, like, you know? Just show love and, you know, tap in with the city, man. Because, you know, he was just basically telling us, like, city, city don't really get no love like that. And we really, uh, like, love y'all and appreciate y'all. So I'm like, all right, bet. So I go to this club hosting. Um, he introduced me to some people. Some of them were YouTubers. Some of them were creators. You know what I'm saying? And some of the creators that were fans of me, they were just like, yo, you know how much we fuck with y'all here in Toronto, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I'm excited. You know, every time... um. Somebody's a YouTuber or creator, it brings me back to a, a, a point in my career or a point in my life where I, I wasn't appreciated or loved. And I know how it feels to meet, you know what I'm saying, your idol or somebody who you're inspired by. So I love showing love to creators and YouTubers. So that's just one thing that I always had for me as a heart and mind. And, you know, maybe it backfired on me. Who knows? But um, after that happens, we go to the club. We turn up at the club. Um, we hang out, go get food. After that, we go home. Next day goes by, we start up the stream, right? After we start up the stream, um, people are telling me to go to, people are telling me uh, to go to Yorkdale Mall. Now, at first we're going to the Eaton Center, but everybody's telling me Yorkdale is better. It's a better mall. Uh, it's the biggest mall in Toronto. Yada yada yada, right? So Krabaz has this whole thing set up, right? So we go. I have the cameraman. Um, and Krabaz has, like, some other people in the car. He's like, yo, he's introducing me. Yo, this is the person who's going to, this is the person who's going to get us for pictures. This is the cameraman. This is the person who's going to bring us the bitches. He's breaking it down to me. I'm like, all right, bet, whatever, cool, right? After this happens, um, we end up going to the mall. As we're going to the mall, um, I'm going to the food court. I'm going to the OVO store because, you know, I want to add on some OVO 8 because, you know, I'm a big Drake fan, so... I just wanted to wear something to appreciate Drake. Everybody's making fun of my outfit, blah, blah, blah. So I changed my shoes and I go get some Air Forces, right? Now, this is where everything happens at. So let's actually break this down, right? Boom. After this happens, um, a YouTuber appears, right? As the YouTuber appears, um, hold on. One second. Hold on, mom. Let me call you back. Uh, as the YouTuber uh, appears, he's like, "Yo, um, Bass introducing me to him." He's like, "Yo, um, this is the person that's bringing us the the bitches." Yada yada yada. He's like, "Yo, bro, you mind if I get you for this vlog?" Blah blah blah. I'm like, "Yes, I'm showing him love on this vlog." He's like, "Yo, I need you to rate these things." Yada yada yada. This then the third, All right? Um, we end up meeting one of the girls inside the mall. You know what I'm saying? She's very friendly. Yada, yada, yada. I fuck with her. He said there's two more girls who are supposed to be coming to the mall, but they're appearing late. Now, that could be an indicator. They're appearing late. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay, whatever. Just let them know when they're here. they here. They They get in. They hop in the Sprinter. We close the door. We off to the Drake concert. So after we're off to the Drake concert, I'm talking to this girl, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? The other two girls in the car, they're kind of quiet and shy, right? Now, 
here's the thing. Um, let's just continue with the story. I'll, I'll go back to it afterwards, right? They're kind of quiet and shy. Now, mind you, um, the Drake concert from Yorkdale was far as fuck. It was like an hour, 30 to 40 minutes. Like, uh, it was a long drive. Anybody who was in the stream, they'll tell you that, that that drive was a super long drive. You see what I'm saying? Um, as we're in the car, I'm like, well, like, bro, like, the chat's like, bro, y'all should have, I should have got some liquor or something to turn them up. So I'm like, I tell my driver, now, I want you guys to really listen so you can follow along with the story. I tell my driver, I said, stop at the nearest liquor store, right? Didn't say a location, didn't say an address. I just said, stop at the nearest liquor store, right? Um, unless anybody in the stream could find any details, whatever, cool. I'm telling him, stop at the nearest liquor store, right? Cap and Kabaz, they go inside the liquor store to get the bottles, right? They were like, yo, why are we only getting one bottle? We should get two bottles, right? That's what the YouTuber said. The YouTuber also was like, oh, I have a friend who could bring us a bottle. Keep this in mind. He's like, I got a friend who could bring us a bottle. He wouldn't even charge y'all. I said, well, where is he at? He can meet us at the show. You know what I'm saying? But I'm still, I'm not thinking anything of it. You feel me? And I don't want to blame anybody or let people make accusations or whatever the case may be. I just want you to follow along with the story. You know what I'm saying? So after this happens, one of the girls is like, um, I'm finna use the restroom. The bad, uh, one of the guys in the sprinter was like, I'm finna grab another bottle. So now the other girls are like, oh, now nah, I got to use the restroom too. So four people had to hop out of the sprinter, right? There's four people who hop out of the sprinter. After four people hop out of the sprinter, the door is wide open because people are going in and out the sprinter. You know what I'm saying? We don't know when niggas is coming back, blah, blah, blah. Should that door have been, have been shut? Absolutely, right? After this happens, a guy comes into the sprinter. He's reaching. He has like one arm right here and the other one. He pulls out his gun. He's not, he's not really holding the gun. Like, I don't know. He's holding the gun kind of, he's holding it from the extended clip. Like, you guys can see in the footage, he's holding it from the extended clip, right? After he's holding the gun from the extended clip, he's like, run everything. As soon as he says that, my driver peels off. He cuts the wheel. That's why in the clip, you could... You can see me, I dropped the phone. That's how hard my driver peels off. I'm like, oh shit, everybody in the car is rolling, like they're tumbling and shit, right? My homeboy, Cap. Cap rolls out the sprinter. The person with the gun is still inside of the sprinter. You see what I'm saying? As the person with the gun is still inside of the sprinter, Krabaz jumps behind him and Krabaz ends up jumping out the sprinter. So now it's me. The two other guys that's in the sprinter and, and the gunman, right? After this happens, he now, he sees that Cap is out the car. He now directly points the gun towards me, right? As soon as he points the gun towards me, boom! I don't know what my driver hit. It felt like the speed bump or something. The car is moving in motion. Boom! He hits the speed bump. Everybody's all like tumbling and shifting over and shit again. The gunman drops his gun. He drops his gun. After he drops his gun, thank God, the gun fell out the sprinter. As the gun falls out the sprinter, he's still in the car. But he's, he's kind of like nervous. He's looking like left, right, like, oh shit. You see what I'm saying? He jumps out the sprinter. As he jumps out the sprinter, the car... The car, like, comes down suddenly to a stop. I'm like, hell no. Close the door. Because, remember, he just dropped his gun. So I'm thinking he's going to pick the gun up and try to, you know what I'm saying, run back to the sprinter or something. I'm like, close the door, close the door, and pull off. Close the door, pull off. So I'm telling my driver, I'm like, go, go, go. We're not stopping this car for shit. Go. As that happened, he closes the door. Now, mind you, this is all in, like, a 60-second time span. Cap and Krabaz, they bend out the vehicle. So I'm thinking that they had a head start to take off, right? Krabaz calls one of the guys in the sprinter. He's like, yo, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm thinking Krabaz and Cap went the same way. 
So I'm like, okay, Krabaz, you're good. Where's my homeboy at? He's like, Cap's not with me. He walks out. He's like, he's like, I see Cap. I see Cap. I'm like, oh, thank God. You see what I'm saying? I tell Krabaz, I'm like, bro, y'all call an Uber to the hotel. Because if we spin back, if we spin back, you know what I'm saying? Um, no, first, I initially tell him, I said, where are you at? And are they still there? Because if we spin back, they might, they might shoot the shit up. So I'm telling them, I'm like, yo, y'all hide, y'all hide. Hide, Uber, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So after that happens, I text Cap. I said, bro, you good? He said, yeah, I'm good. Cap ends up calling my phone. He said, he said, yo, where you at? I'm like, bro, we here. We can spin back to come get you. You want us to spin back? He said, you still streaming? I said, yeah, I'm still streaming. He says, they got me, gang. As soon as that happened, I ended the stream. I pointed at everybody. I said, I told my driver, stop the car. All you niggas off the sprinter now. All you niggas off the fucking sprinter now. All y'all niggas out the sprinter. As everybody's getting their stuff, getting off the sprinter, they found like a cell phone device. It was like one of the girls' phones. I told them, here, take, take the girl's phone. Everybody, everybody off the sprinter. Y'all got to go, right? After this happens, we all link back. Uh, it's just me, Cap, and Krabaz this time. Nobody else. I'm asking niggas, what the fuck happened? Cap told me his point of view. He said, yo, as soon as the driver pulled off and I fell out, Cap said that there was two more gunmen outside. He said, in the clip, you only saw one. Apparently, there was three. Right? He said it was two more gunmen outside. You know, um, as there was two more gunmen outside, he was like, um, he was like, he seen them, he ended up running, but he didn't go inside the store. Krabaz ended up going back in the store. Cap ran back to the Sprinter. So Cap was running back towards the Sprinter. He said that they ended up hawking them down because they got back in the car and chased them down. I didn't even know Cap was going back to the Sprinter. Because I'm like, I told you my point of view, the nigga dropped, his, nigga dropped his gun. And after he dropped his gun, I'm thinking that he's coming back or whatever. So I closed the door. I didn't even see him or hear him. So Cap was coming back to the Sprinter. And as Cap is coming back, the driver was still already driving. And mind you, my, the driver was just there for, for my safety. He didn't know what was going on either. He just did whatever he had to do. And then, truth be told, the driver did. In fact, save a life. You see what I'm saying? So after this happens, he tells me the story. I don't know what was going on. I don't know if it was the girls. I'm not going to accuse anybody, like I said. I don't know if it was the girls. I don't know if it was the YouTuber. I don't know who it was. It could even be, you know, we were live streaming the whole entire time. We was at, we was at a mall. Somebody told me that there's a big hood from across that mall. You know what I'm saying? And that they could have been followed. The one thing that I do know is that we were followed the whole entire time. Because I'm telling you, from that mall to the liquor store, it was a 40-minute drive. I'm telling y'all right now, it was a 40-minute drive. All I know is we were being followed. So I can't sit here and blame and say it was the girls. I can't sit here and blame and say it was the YouTuber. The only thing I know is that my location was exposed because I was doing IRO streaming. And they were there the whole entire um, after that happened, um, it did teach me a lesson. I know you guys have multiple questions about security or whatever. So let me, let me just go ahead and address the security part, right? So the security part, I was going to get security, right? The security was charging me eight hours for security, right? I'm like, yo, I don't need the security for eight hours. Hold on. I'm like, yo, I don't need the security for eight hours. I just need the security for two hours, right? That's the first thing I thought in my mind. Second thing, they told me that security can't carry guns in Canada. That's what I was told. They said, yo, it's just, it is what it is. I'm not Canadian. If you guys want to comment below, give y'all thoughts. If y'all want to say that they told me a lie, I don't know. They told me that sec security in Canada can't get carry guns that they're anti-guns, that they can't be armed, blah, blah, blah. There's no such thing as a registered firearm. 
for them to use. Like, there's they just can't carry guns. Now, again, I'm not from Toronto. I'm not from Canada. So, if anybody could vouch in the comment section, please let me know because that could be a piece of the story too. Because if, if if security can carry guns, then I might look at certain niggas funny. You see what I'm saying? So I was told that they can't carry guns. That's just what I was told. Security can't carry guns. That was the only thing I was told, right? So I'm like, why am I hiring somebody that's a thousand dollars for two hours who can't even carry a gun? You know? And um I was like, well, I'm going to a mall. I don't think people would try me at a mall. There's police in the mall. And I'm going to the Drake concert, and I know the Drake concert is filled with police. Now, it was an unfortunate situation because we made a stop to the liquor store. If we didn't make that stop, who knows? We could have probably been good unless they were just ready to crash out at a Drake show. I mean, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But um, I, I, I'm I, really just hurt about this situation. Um, I apologize to Cap. Um, this incident has a similar incident like this has happened before. Uh, I never want to speak about the L.A. story, but uh, a situation like this was posting the L.A. story. Um, I've been shot at before. I've had gunplay towards me before. And in every single situation, I prevailed. Thank God. You know what I'm saying? In every single situation, I prevailed. Thank God. And um, I'm using this as a lesson um, from now on. Uh, someone told me the the most knowledgeable thing ever, and someone told me um, hours and minutes of discomfort is not worth your life. Get security, and um, from now on, I will be getting security. Um, two big ass armed security. Um, this this is like I said, this is not the first time it's happened. It's probably the third time it's happened to me, and in every single uh, way, shape, or form, I prevailed. And it's just because of me thinking that. It's not going to happen right here. There's no way it could happen right here. It's me just thinking that, you know? And um, like I said, little hours and minutes of discomfort could really cause you your life. And um, like I said before, uh, for all my supporters, you guys don't have to harass the girls. You guys don't have to whatever. Just leave the situation alone. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. It happened. It's over with. You know what I'm saying? And um, just, just leave everybody alone. Stay out of the situation. We're going to move on from this. You know what I'm saying? I promise you we're going to move on from this. And um, it, it all started with just me trying to show Toronto love and trying to show Canada love. It made me just think about certain things like, yo, I'm going to have to just start saying no to pictures. I'm going to just have to start, you know what I'm saying, just stop showing love to certain people. Just move, move smart, move the way how I want it because you never really know people's intentions. You never really know who's out there to get you. You know what I'm saying? Um. As far as Canada goes and Toronto goes, I still love Canada. I still love Toronto. Um, this is something that could have happened anywhere. Um, and you know, it's just an unfortunate situation. Um, other than that, that happened. Uh, I see everybody on Twitter and a lot of people making jokes about the situation. Uh, it's including some of my so-called friends. And just, just trying to get content out of it or trying to get streams out of it. And it's just like, bro, I ain't gonna lie. I don't follow some of them. I ain't gonna lie to you. I just don't fuck with certain people. And anybody who's trying to make a joke out of this situation, you know, God bless. You know what I'm saying, I'm sorry that my life and his life was a joke to you because certain things could have really happened. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not gonna speak for Cap's side of the story because that's his own story, but Cap did get injured in that situation. You know what I'm saying? And um, like I said, uh, I apologize to Cap because I was the target. I was for sure the target. You know what I'm saying? And I know I was the target. And it's something that I got to live with while being guilty of. You know what I'm saying? And um, with that being said, I love all my supporters. I love those who love me. And um, for the people who really do support me, uh, pray for me. Because I've been going through a lot of things this year. And um, I'm just trying to move on from the situation and trying to do better for myself. That's it. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's pretty much all I can say about the situation. Um, I don't know. Loads of things could have occurred. Who knows if we were backdoored? Um, who knows if if they just had the location or were throwing us the horns at a time? I really don't know. Uh, the situations that happened and the predicament that happened, it could feel like a backdoor, but you honestly got on the shit. You just don't know. And um, like I said, I've learned on from this, and I moved on from this, and I just learned to no more. No, no new people. I'm not hanging around nobody extra. If I don't know you, I don't know you. 
you know what I'm saying? And um, this could just happen in any type of situation, even people in the industry, people in the industry could back door you. People in the, you know what I'm saying? This could happen in any type of situation. So it's just like, yo, don't trust people. Um, don't trust anybody. Move smart. Um, shout out to Deshae Frost. Deshae Frost, um, I, I talked to him for about two hours. He was telling me, yo, bro, even if security isn't armed, there's little things they could do for you. Like, they could have watched that door. They would have closed that door for you. They would have, you know what I'm saying? It's just little things that they could have done to change the outcome. And me me just thinking that they're not armed, meaning that they can do nothing was a silly mistake. And he was just telling me, like, yo, if you're going to have girls or use girls for content, do the same thing I do. Turn off their phones. Make them put it in the bucket. You know what I'm saying? And if certain people can't respect that, they don't need to be around you. You know what I'm saying? And he's just really just putting me on game and letting me know certain things, you know? But um, all the people who saying I ran and all the other things and I left them, like, all that shit is over with. You know what I'm saying? And adrenaline, like I said, adrenaline is rushing. Like, what do you expect for a nigga to do? You expect for a nigga to jump out the sprinter with him? Like, what the fuck? There's three armed men. Like, what do you expect to do in a situation like that? You know, and initially he was out the sprinter first. I really thought he ran and got away. His crevasse got away. They just ran two different directions. So it was just confusion and adrenaline rushing and a lot of things going on at one time. So anyway, the shit is over with now. Um, like I said, I've learned from the situation. I moved on from it. And I'm just gonna leave it like that. My fault. I didn't really want to make too much cuts to this video and shit like that. But um, to end off the video, I just wanted to spread awareness to all streamers and YouTubers to get security. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know YouTubers who run around with spirits all the time, like Booba or even just um, YouTubers or streamers with jewelry or whoever. Just take more cautious of who you are. That you can, you can have a target on your back at any given moment. You know what I'm saying? And uh, not to trust people. Like I saw a clip this morning on Twitter of like, Somebody stream sniped AJ and pulled up on him in the middle of traffic. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? And even something small like that, you never know if you're a target or not. You don't know people's intentions. It doesn't matter. Even even in my situation, it could have been anything. Like it doesn't matter if it's jewelry, the way you post, the way you fly. Certain people just do things for a name out here. So get security. You know what I'm saying? That's all the awareness that I have to spread. And um, yeah, that's it.